doesn't fit. Not only that, but later that same day, another speed controller died. But then, I received an email from a guy called Ted, who runs a shop called tramperboards.com. He invited me to go and visit and have a look at what kind of gear they had there. Now they specialise in electric boards, both off-road and on-road, and I was really impressed with the kind of kit that they had up there. Now I don't know much about electric boards, but they can customise everything to your specification. So if you're interested in electric boards, go and check them out. They even let me have a go, but this is embarrassingly slow. Anyway, they hooked me up with a VESC 6, which is the latest version of the VESC uh, series speed controller line. And I got to work building the version 3 electric bike. The VESC 6 is more than capable of running 12S lithium polymer batteries, or up to 60 volts. Due to its large heatsink, it can allow 80 amps to be delivered to the motor, equating to 4 kilowatt output. This allowed me to run a single 80 size electric motor setup, which reduced the weight of the bike and also increased simplicity and hopefully reliability. The pulley and belt drive system is still the same as the previous versions as this is still pretty reliable. The whole setup is powered by a 12 cell 15 amp hour lithium ion battery, which should be capable of doing about 15 miles on this setup. And if that isn't enough, I've also got a left hand thumb throttle which activates regenerative braking for riding down those steep hills and charging up the batteries. For more information on this setup, watch to the end of the video as I do a quick run through. For now, let's go for a quick ride. So I'm out here on a nice cold frosty morning uh, riding the version 3 e-bike and uh, first impressions are it is so smooth. The new FOC mode on the VESC 6 is just so smooth and uh, you can probably tell it's quite a bit quieter than the version 2 uh, video was. Now uh, I haven't given it a full whack yet of uh, throttle, I'm just warming up the batteries a bit because it is freezing out here and I think I regret wear not wearing gloves. Um, on my left hand side here you can see the regen throttle switch a bit better, I'll use that in a second coming up for this corner. So I simply press that and it cuts the throttle and also charges the battery slightly. So uh, I believe there's a straight here. So let's go full throttle now. So it's doing about 34 to 36. It's doing 36 miles an hour, pretty damn good. Let's do some uh, regen charging coming up to this. And get the power on. Oh yeah, it's got plenty of torque. Oh mate, that, that is so much fun, that talk. So yeah, I'd say the power is quite comparable to the dual motor. Uh, probably about the same as the dual motor, I think. But just a lot smoother with the, the higher voltage and the FOC mode. Now take it a bit easier around these rows because you don't know what's going to come the other way. I know these roads quite well, but uh, you still can't, you know, trust that there's not going to be someone on the wrong side of the road, if there even is a side on these roads. <laughs> also, with it being frosty, I don't want to hit any ice. Oh, it just pulls out those corners so nice. And then regen braking towards the next corner. Oh, I love it. I love it. Whoa. <laughs> Is that? That looks like two birds. Let me try to catch them up. No, I haven't. There's a tight corner coming up, so I won't try and catch those birds.
so the version 2 bike running the old VESCs uh, was running at 33 volts maximum uh, and current limited to 120 amps this is running uh, 50 volts maximum and current limited to 80 amps so in terms of actual wattage output uh, then I think this is actually slightly more um, mainly because the voltage tag isn't as much and also these are better batteries but they're, they're theoretically the same at power output it's just a lot smoother I've got the regenerative braking set to 30 amps of charge so if I apply a full brake it will charge the batteries at about 1200 watts I believe or well 30 amps it, obviously the voltage varies um, 30 amps charge is a bit much for these lithium ion cells but it's only for like you know maximum 5-10 seconds It just climbed up these hills like it's nothing. I've mounted the hall sensors externally on this motor. And I'll tell you what, if, if you want to go uh, FOC mode, you definitely need sensors. It just increases the torque so much. Especially the lower end, probably between 10 and 15 miles an hour, the, the torque increase is just insane. If you want to find out how I've mounted the hall sensors, um, I'll show you briefly at the end of this video. Uh, but if not, I'll, I'll be posting some links in the description of how you can mount them yourself. I think even putting hall sensors on the version 1 of this e-bike probably would have made a big difference. So uh, how about we switch this up a little bit and uh, maybe go off-roading. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Maybe uh, I should have remembered that it rained for quite a while. Ah, that's all right, I only cleaned this yesterday. Should we go for a ride? Yeah. Uh, take the... Take the wuss route, because I don't want to get muddy. <laughs> yep, that's right, I'm taking a, a road bike with 60 PSI in the tyres and a four kilowatt motor on the back of it, off-roading. I wonder if it will spin. Ooh. Maybe not just here, hang on. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, lots of horse poop. What? Ooh, ooh. Don't want to get stuck. I suppose that's a good thing if you if you think you're going to get stuck, you just ah oh, shit. So my GoPro on my head has just run out of batteries. So I'm gonna attempt to film the rest of this crazy what run. Oh god. <laughs> like this. And if I if I end up dying, then uh, at least I'll catch some of it on video, right? Definitely not going to be wheel spinning one-handed right now. I don't think I could cope with a uh, a Marquez MotoGP style rear end slide one-handed if I was holding my phone. Actually, I'll get some shots of the uh, of the motor.
So you can really hear the, uh, the motor's pretty silent. You can obviously still hear the belt noise. Um, but in comparison to what the version 2 was like, it is almost silent. There's a straight bit here, I'm going to gun it. Yeah, I wussed out a bit there. <laughs> this is this bike is just amazing. All right, I think I'm going to enjoy the rest of this ride myself and uh, share some more details when I get home. See you in a bit. So I managed to make it back from that ride nice and safely. Didn't get too muddy and uh, didn't manage to slide off with these road tires. Uh, so I'm just going to run you through a bit more in-depth information about the bike. Um, that I did earlier. Uh, I've put this at the end of the video so that people don't get too bored near the beginning. Um, so yeah, let me start at the handlebars. So as before, there was a twist throttle. Uh, that's obviously to increase the power to the motor. And on the left hand side is the new throttle. It's a thumb throttle. And this goes to a second input on the speed controller, which controls uh, the braking, so the regenerative braking. Um, obviously get lots of comments saying can you enable redundant braking on this bike and yes you can and I've finally figured out how to do it um, in an ergonomic way uh, so moving down here is just a standard speedometer you know, speed, range, etc uh, and then here is the new batteries uh, the new battery pack it's uh, lots of 18650 LG HG2 cells. Uh, it's a 12S 5P uh, rated pack, so that means it's about 50 volts, uh, 40 to 50 volts, and about 15 amp hours. Um, each of these are 4S 5P, so um, I can use them for other stuff. They're slightly low voltage each pack and wired in series. And if I go over to the other side of the bike, um, I've wired them up in a way that I don't need to have a massive lead going to each battery. It's all connected in series um, down to the main plug at the bottom. And what's cool about this is that this plug here is in series with the battery pack. So if anything goes wrong or I need to shut off the power and it and I don't have response from the throttle or the or the thumb brake, I simply pull out this plug like that and it completely disconnects the battery. Um, so that's quite a nice safety feature to have. Just above the battery here, I have a small voltmeter. Uh, it's pretty terrible. Uh, it can only go up to 20 or 30 volts, I think, so it's only connected to one battery. Um, and you can't really see it in uh, bright sun sunlight. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's all right when I just stop to have a break and I can just check up on the batteries. Uh, these battery packs are mounted to the down frame, oh there's some mud there, uh, using, there's a 3D printed bracket here, 3D prints uh, limited, or 3D prints PLA plastic, um, they always sort me out with the best plastic, as with all the other PLA printed parts are here, and then moving on from the battery, there's XD90 anti-spark connectors right here, which plug into the brains of the whole operation, the new VESC 6, which is an absolutely amazing piece of equipment uh, it can be purchased from tramperboards.com uh, there are a bunch of great guys up there up in nottingham in the uk and um, quite honestly it's worth every penny uh, as i mentioned before i have broken uh, three vesks now uh, three vesk fours um, which over here in the uk cost 110 pounds each so if you do the math that's 330 pounds and considering one of these is 300 pounds, I would much rather have gone with this in the first place. Uh, the performance is just so much better being uh, 12 cell uh, and 80 amps rather than eight cell and 50 amps. Um, just going with a single ESC and motor is just so much easier than having the dual motor and all that kind of rubbish. And also having the FOC mode is so smooth. Um, as you probably could tell from the video, it just, the power delivery is so nice, so um, I'd highly recommend one of these. 
I'm not just saying that um, just because they sorted me with the VESC 6 but uh, yeah I, I just wish I hadn't broken all those VESCs in the in the previous few weeks and purchased this first of all would have been a very good investment but anyway enough of that uh, onto the wiring there are three fat wires here which obviously go to the motor and then there are lots of smaller wires here some of the smaller wires go to the control inputs at the top and some of them go with the fat wires to the motor and that is where the hall sensors um, come into play so the motor is a Turnergy CA80 uh, 160 kV from Hobby King um, I'll put the link in the description below you may notice that it looks slightly different to what it does on the Hobby King site that's because I've knocked the shaft through the other side so I can mount the pulley around there and I've also added a 3D printed fan like I did on the version 1 e-bike uh, just to cool it a bit better um, it doesn't really need cooling but it's, it also protects the, the end of the motor um, all of the hall sensors are mounted in here uh, as I mentioned whilst I was riding I'll post a link in the description of how uh, you can sensor a non-sensor motor um, you pretty much have to mount the sensors at a given angle around the motor I really apologize for that audio there's a really annoying plane flying overhead but these sensors are at 17.14 degrees spacing um, I, I think that's to do with how the magnetic poles work um, but they, they really increase the low-end torque and yeah I just so highly recommend them it's, it's a bit of a pain to solder them because they're a bit fiddly but well worth it in the end so onto the motor mount I haven't really spoken much about this and I didn't really show any video of making it this is an 8mm thick aluminium plate um, mounted to the frame using a 3D printed block um, so still using the 3D printed uh, parts from 3D Prints uh, UK um, still PLA and it's, it's solid that's not going anywhere um, but the aluminium part just allows a bit better cooling of the motor a bit better durability the um, all of these screws that mount the motor to the plate are at, well the aluminium is actually tapped threaded so the bolts don't need a nut on the other side which means that the motor um, the pulley can sit close to the the motor bearing which means less stress on the, the bearing and also less stress on the shaft so that space is shorter whereas when it's 3D printed the space between the bottom of the motor and the pulley was quite large because it had to be strong um, so there's an advantage to that as well the roller bearing, the idle idler pulley I think it's called uh, I've moved that as far round as I can as in as, as far up towards this part of the belt without it touching um, so that I can run a looser belt tension um, because too high belt tension really um, puts a lot of stress on, on both the bigger pulley um, the motor mount and also it reduces the efficiency um, so now I can run quite low belt tension and uh, yeah it works nicely the other advantage um, with moving moving that like that is because it's a 1.1 meter belt uh, fixed, so a fixed length. Um, I bought a one meter belt and it was too short, and they they didn't do a 1.05 meter belt. So moving this up slightly just allowed me to squeeze the back brake um, back on, which is obviously very nice. So having the rear brake, the front brake and the regenerative braking of the motor um, yeah it's just a lot safer than what the, the dual motor was um, I'm running with a 12 tooth pulley on the motor uh, as I did before and a 184 tooth pulley on the rear wheel I think that's pretty much everything um, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of questions about the regenerative braking and I will be making a video soon um, about testing it I need to gather a lot of data uh, do a lot of miles um, to actually get a definitive conclusion of how you know well it works I definitely know it works because I've seen the voltage go up when riding down a big hill 
Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. If not, then uh, yeah, leave a question in the comments. I'll be sure to answer it in my next video with the regenerative braking. And uh, yeah, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. And if you want to uh, build your own uh, bike of this spec, I'll be uploading all the 3D printer files, uh, the, mo the um, battery bracket, the VESC mount, motor mount, and the pulley. I'll be uploading them all to my Patreon page. So you can go support me for $1 a month and get access to everything. Um, thanks once again for watching and goodbye.